Hey guys, uh, this is Tom with Amped Airsoft again. So um, we are going to be going over the Polar Star FCU today uh, in our FCU series. So the Polar Star FCU, this is basically the grandfather of all FCUs, right? Uh, the Fusion Engine was like kind of the first thing to come out as far as HPA. Now this is the third revision or the third generation of the Polar Star FCU. Um, it really hasn't changed in the past few years as much as uh, some other FCUs. I'm gonna start with some few quick fixes so you don't have to watch this whole video if you don't need to. And then I'll start going through each setting, setting by setting, going through exactly what they do when you're tuning it. And then I'll give some brief tuning tutorials. This is gonna be a little bit of a longer winded video. So we'll put some chapters in here. So if you guys just need to find something real quick. Uh, and with that, we'll get right into it. So uh, Polish Star FCU, let's talk about what it has on it right away. So first off is your power cord here, which you're gonna attach your battery to. It has your two JST ports. One is a five pin and one is a three pin. The five pin one is gonna be the one that goes to your trigger board. The three pin one is gonna be your accessory port. Now, generally you're gonna see uh, people running, you know, magazine, like box mag magazines to this, to basically, as you pull the trigger, it will wind the box mag magazine. That's the most common use of this port. Or I've seen people run some of the uh, max tracer units uh, when those were around for a while. Then you have your LCD display right here, and then your joystick right here. You can press in on the joystick, and then you can move it in four directions. So that's pretty much how you navigate the menus that'll pop up on this LCD screen. Let's start getting into it. You're gonna plug the battery in. So it's either gonna say shot, full auto fire, or it'll be in programming mode on this screen after you plug the battery in. I'm gonna click this button down here one time, and that'll take us into programming mode. You should see something that says, yeah, revision like 3.0 or something like that. And if you wanna navigate the menu, you're gonna go left or right on this. And then if you're gonna adjust anything, you're gonna go up and down. That is the basics of how the FCU works. It's very, very simple. So let's go into some quick things to diagnose if you're running into issues. So there's gonna be two main things that you can do to diagnose very quickly to try and get you back on the field a little bit quicker if it is due to a tuning issue that you're running into. The first one is going to be, hey, is my FCU set up for an F2 fusion engine or is it set up for a F1 slash jack? So we're talking, is it set up for a two solenoid system or is it set up for a single solenoid system? So right up from the factory, if you get your FCU with a unit, it should be tuned to the unit you bought. So if you buy a jack, it should be set to the F1 setting. If you bought an F2, it should be set to the fusion engine setting because one has two solenoids and the other one has a single solenoid. So how you determine if it's in F1 or FE setting is you go over one and it's gonna say fire control, which is what the FC stands for, FE or F1. So this one is set to FE. So if you were trying to determine like, hey, I don't know if my gun is working, it's causing some weird issues, like it's not even firing, I don't know why, or it's just rolling out, you might need to be set to FE for your F2, but in fact you were set to F1, which if you just press down one, which is what I just did, you go into the F1 setting. Um, it auto saves once you make these changes. Uh, the changes are effective like immediately when you repress this, just as a you know quick tip. So that's a one quick thing to do to check to make sure to troubleshoot. The other one is to do a factory reset. Now what you do with a factory reset on this particular FCU, not other brands, is you're gonna hold down this toggle button and then you are going to plug and unplug your battery connector. So you're gonna be holding this down while you are plugging in your battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this set to F1 and then I'm gonna press in so that it's back into the shot mode. And then when I do the factory reset, you'll see that it changes back to FE because that is the standard factory setting on all FCUs is to be in the FE mode unless you bought a jack or anything like that. It's gonna be the same for those. So when you do a factory reset, you will need to change it back to the F1 setting when you're using it with your jack. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down this button right here it's hard to do with the, with the camera, but I'm gonna hold that button down and I'm gonna plug this in. Should say something like reset or default or something like that. 
uh, release, and now I am back into programming mode. So that is a how you do a factory reset. Very, very, very common troubleshooting thing to do. If you're having a problem because you tuned your settings or something and now your gun is completely not working, immediately just factory reset it. It should fix 80% of the problems you're dealing with. Um, so that's what we automatically tell people to do. Do a factory reset. Now, I'm gonna go over one. And you're gonna see now it is in FE mode. And I'm gonna go down and put it back into F1 mode. And that is what you need to do as the last part of a factory reset for a jack or an F1 or any unit that is a single solenoid unit. If you're running a dual solenoid unit like a Fusion Engine F2 or the new Gate um, Pulsar D, you wanna be in FE mode, okay? So quick little thing. Now I'm gonna start running you through and getting into the weeds of the, all the settings and all the ways those settings affect the unit. So I'm looking at, I'm gonna get out of programming mode and I'm gonna re-enter it because that is the screen you're gonna see when you enter programming mode. So to enter and exit programming mode, you are just going to click the center button here, okay? And when you click the center button, that is gonna tell you the revision of the software you're on. That is what this page is for. And now we're gonna to go to the right. That is gonna tell me if I'm in FE or F1 mode, so what solenoid I'm using and how this F FCU should you know, think when it's firing. I'm gonna go over one more. Now we're at the rate of fire. Uh, that's set to 18. Uh, we'll get into rate of fire. This is not your true rate of fire. I wanna make a note of that. Uh, there's a lot of other factors that go into how you tune for rate of fire. Next screen is semi-auto max rate of fire so basically what that tell what that does is it tells the system like hey i pulled the trigger the guy pulled the trigger once and he keeps pulling the trigger but i'm not gonna let him i'm not gonna fire while he's pulling the trigger right now because that would be above the max rate of fire that he is locked it into uh, where this comes into play is a lot of like tournaments if they are telling you you need to be only firing at this max rate of fire even if you're semi-auto so you're not like super spamming the trigger um that is where this comes into play it's not really used for anything else other than that unless you're trying to like have like a sniper delay set up where you're trying to restrict yourself for just like this is how the regular gun would work um if you're trying to really get in the get into the larp um so that's the only other time this is really used, but it is a cool feature to have on here. So it is usable in a tournament setting or a milsim setting. Um, but yeah, that's what this setting is for. It is the semi-auto max rate of fire, okay? So we're gonna get into the next one is S101, which stands for selector position one. And the zero one stands for how many BBs I will be firing every pull of the trigger in selector position one. We'll go over one more and that's going to say selector position two zero zero if it's at zero zero that means full auto so generally um this is set up immediately from the factory for a version two uh gearbox so selector position one is going to be semi-auto for an m4 selector position two is going to be full auto for a m4 so that is why selector position two is at zero zero and that is why selector position one is at zero one now if i want to make a burst fire all I have to do is increase the number of rounds I want to have come out. So I'm at, I want the whole way up to six there. That's how many rounds are going to come out every pull of the trigger. So six rounds are going to fire every time I pull the trigger now as a burst mode. And if I don't want that, I can turn it back down to one. One other thing to go over with these as a rule of thumb is that your selector position one and your selector position two as programmed on here are not always gonna be the same as how your actual selector switch on your gun works. AKs, for example, are a very big one where your selector position one, you actually wanna taint, change it to double zero and your selector position two, you wanna change to one because on the programming, they're actually flipped with how the physical selector switch is on an AK. Um, with how it truly operates in real life. So uh, that's one where if you wanted to, you know, mimic like how it was as an AG, then you will want to change those around. Very simple way to do it, super easy. Uh, another thing with this is if you want to have just full auto all the time, um, so say you're, you have a 249 that doesn't have a selector, 
um, it'll automatically go off a of selector position one. So if you build out a 249 that doesn't have a selector, you're gonna want to have S2 set to zero, double zero, and then you're gonna have S1, you're gonna wanna have, instead of it being at zero one, you're gonna wanna have it set to double zero as well, and now you can go LMG all, all day and it's gonna full auto for you. So if you build an, a 249 or something like that, that's another LMG that doesn't have a selector switch on it, you will need to program that in your settings on your FCU. That way it's operating how you want it to. Okay, so moving on from there, I'm gonna set this back at one. Now we're getting into anti-stiction timeout and anti-stiction pulse. So these are the next two segs. We're gonna go over anti-stiction separately um, because it is a weird concept that happens because of how the solenoids work. I'll get into that later in the video, but um, for right now, don't worry about it. You generally don't need to touch it, but it is very, very useful that they put that in there as a programming thing. Uh, it's a little nerdy, but I'll explain why it's very good. And it will probably, when I go over it, explain a lot of some weird scenarios you run into when your gun is, you think, performing normally and then out of nowhere it doesn't. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit. Like I said, it's a little bit more in depth. So I'm just gonna go through the other stuff so you guys can take a look at the stuff you're probably gonna be messing with the most. So let's keep moving. Here's number one setting that a lot of people are gonna mess with, DP. So DP is very interesting. So we are in the FE mode, I need to point that out. So, and we just did a factory reset. So this is the factory set preset value for a dual solenoid system for your DP. Your DP stands for your pop it dwell, or a lot of people just say dwell, um, because a lot of people are also running single solenoid systems that you don't need to worry about how the air is flowing around the nozzle because it's all in one stroke and it's all off of one solenoid. I'll get into the differences between single solenoid and dual solenoid when I get to, into the next settings, but we I wanna talk about it here specifically because if you're in the FE mode, you're gonna see that's set to 25. And if you're in the F1 mode, you're gonna see that this setting is set to 50. And I will get into that and do a second. So I'm gonna show you the other two settings that are also dwells that because we're in a dual solenoid setup, you will be able to see. So DP is here. Here is DN and here's DR. Okay, so we're gonna talk about all three of those right now. So let's talk about DP in particular. Your DP is often the one that people are changing because they are trying to tune. This is the thing they start out with when they're trying to tune, which is really cool uh, because it is gonna be the number one thing that will affect your performance, your air efficiency, and your consistency. Um, your DP basically is a number that tells the solenoid to stay open for a certain amount of time. The higher the number, the longer the solenoid is gonna be open for, and the more amount of air is going to go down the barrel. So when you have longer or shorter barrels, you're gonna to wanna to adjust this number. This is set from the factory for kind of like a middle sized barrel, think of a Mark 18, like a 300 millimeter barrel. Um, that's generally what it's set up for from the factory, but this is not tuned specifically to your setup from the factory. If you're shooting a DMR, like a 550 millimeter barrel, you're gonna to wanna to increase the dwell to increase your consistency, your tighten your groupings up, and to volume match a little better. We'll go into volume matching in a separate video uh, to try and explain the concept as an HPA system uses it and an AEG system using it. But th the basics behind volume matching um, is why you wanna increase your DP when you have a longer barrel. And if you have a shorter barrel, like a 125 millimeter or 200 millimeter barrel, you're gonna wanna decrease it down below your uh, set 25 to try and get some better groupings, okay? So DP is really for tightening up your groupings and getting better consistency and also for air efficiency. DP is a really big setting. Um, the other reason, one of the other things to note about DP, and I already touched on this, is if you have a dual solenoid setup, this is gonna be set to a lower setting than a single solenoid setup. The reason for that is because 
When you have a single solenoid setup and it's set to 50, it needs extra air volume to make the nozzle move and fire the BB. It's doing two things at once and that's why it needs that extra air volume. In a dual solenoid setup, you don't need that extra air volume to worry about the nozzle moving because you have a second solenoid that is controlling that airflow uh, to control the nozzle movement. So your DP is gonna control how much air is being sent down the barrel and it's not gonna worry about moving the nozzle back and forth in a dual solenoid setup, so two solenoids um, versus a single solenoid setup. So an F2 versus a jack. So let's get into DN then. DN, because I have a dual solenoid setup, I have another solenoid. And that other solenoid is gonna be open for a set period of time and closed for a set period of time. So DN and DR are kind of going to go hand in hand, but DN is the setting that I will tell you to mess with first. DR gets a little bit tricky. So DN stands for nozzle dwell, and that basically says for how long air is going to be flowing through the solenoid that controls the movement of the nozzle. If the nozzle is set to be forward in the system and when air flows through, the nozzle pulls back, the nozzle is going to stay back for a longer period of time if that solenoid is open for a longer period of time, which means the higher the number, the longer that solenoid is gonna be open for. What people use DN for is really to control uh, double feeds or misfeeds with how your magazine is set up. So if you're noticing some double feeding, you probably have your DN set a little too high, your nozzle is staying back too long. If you are noticing some misfeeds, your DN might be set too low. Oftentimes I see a lot of people having to increase their DN more than decrease their DN uh, just because their mags are not feeding properly or they put a new hop up system in and it's not flowing properly. So DN is there to help you correct for those misfeeds or double feeds. You wanna find that happy medium and you can do that on the fly. So now we're gonna go into the DR. Uh, so DR is the third dwell setting in a dual solenoid setup um, and it kind of is the in-between of DP and DN. So think of it this way, when you fire a round out of a dual solenoid system, what happens is basically one of two directions. If it's in closed bolt mode, it's going to go, your DP setting is going to tell it how long to fire air out, then your DN setting is gonna go and tell it for how long to basically reset the nozzle for a BB to load. And then your DR is gonna be a pause between that nozzle moving again and basically saying, okay, I'm gonna pause for this long because I don't want it to return to the like base position, I'm gonna say, of the nozzle where it started until a certain amount of time to allow for vibration to calm down, to allow for better feeding, to allow for certain rates of fire. There's a lot of different reasons why you play around with DR, but you really should be tuning your DP and your DN first. And then if you're still having problems going with your DR, your DR is really an extra thing to throw in there um, of when you want your solenoid to open or close for your nozzle but it does go hand in hand with the DP. Now, if it's an open bolt setting, what's basically gonna happen is, okay, DN is gonna activate, then DR is gonna activate, and then DP is gonna activate as that nozzle shoots back forward, and then it's gonna fire air out. So that's the systematic way of looking at the dwells as it goes through. That's DR. DR is, like I said, it's an extra delay that you can set. The higher the number, the longer the delay, the lower the number, the lower the delay. Don't worry about messing with it. Um, I think we're gonna shoot a video to try and illustrate it. It's better to illustrate that setting than it is to talk about it. It's a little bit hard to say conceptually, but DR is not something that I would ever really tell anybody to tune unless they were going for some crazy high rate of fire builds or just trying to get the absolute most air efficiency out of their build. But it, it can screw things up very quickly if you don't know how to program it. So I don't tell people to mess with it if they're not comfortable with working with DR. The next setting is gonna be the closed bolt on and off setting for a dual solenoid system. And that basically says, okay, um, do you want the BB to load, the nozzle to go forward, and then nothing happens until you pull the trigger? If you do want that, then you want closed bolt to be on. So what happens is BB loads, nozzle comes forward, and then until you pull the trigger, no air is gonna fire. When you pull the trigger, air is gonna fire, that nozzle is gonna come backwards, a new round is gonna load, and the nozzle is gonna go forward again, and then 
nothing's gonna happen until you pull the trigger again. That is how closed bolt work. If you want it in open bolt mode, which it currently is set to, if it's in the off position, a round is going to load. You are, when you pull the trigger, the nozzle is then going to shoot forward and then air is going to then fire the BB as the nozzle goes forward and then the nozzle is going to retract and allow a BB to load up again until you pull the trigger again. Now there's benefits and cons to each setting. A lot of times slower paced shooters or DMR people or just more relaxed shooters are going to want closed bolt dependent on their setup. It's really dependent on your setup and you really should test in a uh, closed environment if you prefer how your gun is performing on closed or open bolt setting. But if you're not shooting a lot of rapid fire shots, you probably are gonna want closed bolt because it's gonna settle a lot of stuff in the hop up chamber, the vibrations are gonna go away from everything moving around and your shots are gonna be more consistent generally if you're using closed bolt and you are not a trigger spammer. Now, if you're spamming the trigger, in theory, it should also calm all that down, but in certain situations, I've noticed that it actually sometimes ends up being better to run open bolt if you're doing higher rates of fire, whether you're spamming semi-auto or you're an LMG gunner. In those cases, I've noticed sometimes it's better to run open bolt, but it really, really, really depends on your setup of your barrel build, your setup of your nozzle alignment, your setup of the nozzle you're currently running in it. There's a lot of factors. And what I am gonna basically tell you is play around with each one of these settings, close and open. It's a very simple setting. It really can't cause any problems. It's really unlikely to cause a lot of problems. Play around with each and see how your groupings look. And if you want them to be tighter, then try the other one. If it looks like it made it worse, then go back to the original setting you had. That is my advice for open versus closed bolt. So, Let's talk about stiction now. Now that I've gone through a lot of these different settings, we're gonna go to stiction pause, like the stiction timeout, and the stiction pulse. Stiction is a very weird concept that um, is not really talked about outside of HPA techs or people who work on HPA stuff. Stiction is a thing that happens from physics because of rubber. It's very weird. I'll get into it a little bit, but basically what it does is it is a force from rubber sticking to metal. Why am do I why am I even talking about this right now? Well, because the way a solenoid opens and closes is it moves a little tiny thing back and forth, open and closing it. And on the end of that little tiny post is a little chunk of rubber that acts as a seal for the solenoid. And when it's closed, the rubber seal is now touching metal. And when rubber touches metal for a longer period of time, it starts to hold tighter and tighter to metal. So if you're firing rapid fire, and this thing's open, closing, open, closing, open, closing, very quickly, this is not something you need to worry about or overcome with extra pressure to open the solenoid valve for air to flow properly. But if you wait a minute, literally 60 seconds, the force to open that solenoid has now increased very, very slightly. And as you leave your gun sit over time, it will get harder and harder to open that solenoid. Now we're talking fractions of pounds, even less than that, of force needed. However, it does impact how much electricity is needed to open and close that valve in the solenoid. Why am I talking about this? Because what I'm getting at is when you fire around the first time out of your gun after you just plugged in the battery, it's your first time at that event, you may notice that your first round is weaker than the rest of the rounds. You may also notice this after you are running around for a little bit and you go to fire for your first time after being in a firefight, your first round for some reason didn't reach the guy when you know you have that range. That's due to stiction force causing you to need more power to open up your valve. Now we're gonna get into the tuning part of that. If you guys, hopefully you guys understood that very, very uh, rudimentary rundown of stiction force. So we have two settings to control and account for stiction, right? 
this is gonna be your timeout, okay? So basically, as I illustrated with the how stiction works, the longer the period of time, the more stiction force will occur until you reach a maximum point, right? It's gonna hit maximum at some point. So the longer you're not firing your gun, the larger amount of stiction has occurred and the more force you're gonna need to open your valve. Again, we're talking about a very tiny amount of force, but it is there and it's something to account for. This setting, the it looks like a little period, but it's IS, but it looks like a little period because there's a one in there as well. But um, so it says IS zero zero. The zeros are the time limit in which you tell your FCU, hey, wait a minute, don't add any extra force to my shot to overcome stiction. But if it's been longer than 30 seconds or whatever you set this to, then it's gonna start adding more and more and more force to your first shot so that you don't even notice that stiction has happened because you've accounted for it in your FCU. That's why this is cool. Because then that means every time you fire, you know your shots are going to be shooting as far as they need to go. Now that I've gone over the kind of the basic premise, what we're gonna talk about here is what do these numbers mean? And why is this called a timeout? So if it's set to zero, zero, basically that means your anti-stiction timeout is turned off. So if I set this to one, that means it's gonna wait 10 seconds before adding any increment of to the dwell, to the pop it dwell. When the 10 seconds has been reached, so it's gonna count down from the last time you fired, it's gonna count down 10 seconds. It's gonna reset every time you pull the trigger. If it never reaches 10 seconds, it's not gonna add anything to the pop it dwell. But if it reaches 10 seconds and you still haven't pulled the trigger, what it's gonna do is we're gonna go over to IP and it's gonna look at IP and go, hey, this guy wants to add this much extra to the pop it dwell time so that there's more air or there's more force to get the air out to make the shot consistent. Okay, so these are gonna be in increments of one and these are gonna be directly added onto your DP, okay? So if I go up by like five and my DP is set to 25 and I pulled the trigger one time and I haven't pulled it in 10 seconds, my DP, instead of being at 25 for my normal shots are gonna be set to 30 for the first shot that I do to overcome that stiction force inside the solenoid. The IP is basically just controlling how much you need to increase your dwell by to counteract that first shot stiction force. Your IS is gonna be the timer on that. So if you don't want this to apply for 30 seconds, you would put that at three. If you don't want it to apply for a minute, you put it at six and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna set this back down to zero, which means that is gonna be always on. And then I'm gonna set this back down to zero, which means if it's all always on, but I'm not adding anything, then it's gonna be set to normal. Now, if I set this down to, if I set the timer, the IS down to zero, and I have this set to five, well, my DP is no longer just 25 every time I pull the trigger. My DP is actually 30. So it's very important that if you change your timer down to zero, back down to zero on IS, you change your IP back down to zero. The I, IS zero zero doesn't mean off, it means no time limit. So that's pretty much all the settings um, on the Fusion Engine. Stiction's a little bit of a weird one. If you don't understand it, don't mess with it. You don't really need to. Uh, oftentimes we, we really, really don't need to mess with it unless we're doing a DMR build. So don't worry about it too much. Um, don't get overwhelmed by it. If you wanna know more about it, happy to tell you more about it. The two settings I really wouldn't tell people to mess with is, or the three settings I wouldn't really tell people to mess with is, IP, IS, or DR. Uh, those three settings are kind of a little bit not needed for most airsofters to mess with. The other ones are all stuff that you definitely might wanna mess around with as far as base level tuning, or you want your setup to run a certain way, again, like a 249 setting. Um, uh, you want everything to be full auto, so you wanna change your S1 and your S2 to double zero, so everything is full auto. Um, 
So yeah, that's the basics of the settings on the FCU. Now, let's get into the last part of this where um, I'm gonna go over a little bit of the differences of FE versus F1. And the only difference is if I go to F1, right? And I go over, I'm gonna have rate of fire 18, same as FE. I'm gonna have the same uh, settings for the max semi-auto rate of fire. I'm gonna have the same S1 setting. I'm gonna have the same S2 setting. I'm gonna have the same IS, the same IP, so you can mess around with that. I'm not gonna have the same DP, and we went over that at, in the DP section of the video. And that's it, I'm not gonna have the DN or the DR because I don't have two solenoids. So now I'm gonna put it back to FE. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit about tuning, my general strategy for tuning. It's gonna be a quick 30 second thing. So basically when I go to tune something for the first time, I leave everything set to factory settings. Whether that's a single solenoid setup or a dual solenoid setup, I leave things set from the factory and then I work off of that. And then I go and I mess with my DN first. I want my gun feeding, right? So I'm gonna to go to my DN and if my gun is not feeding properly with my magazines and everything, and my BBs aren't feeding in properly, if they're not feeding or I'm getting misfeeds, I'm gonna increase my DN. And if I increase past 30 on my DN, I really should not have it past 30 in most cases, but if I increase it past 30, then there's a bigger problem and I really need to figure out why it's not feeding properly. And then if I'm getting double feeds, I'm gonna turn my DN down. The end goal with tuning uh, with the, the theory that a lot of us at the shop use is to get the numbers of the dwells as low as possible. The lower your dwells are, the more air efficient your system's gonna be and the higher rate of fire you can go. After I do that, I go to my DP and now I'm looking at my, my groupings. I set my PSI um, on my regulator to be the FPS that I want it to be. And then I will look at the baseline because you want to set a baseline of what my groupings look like if they look like they're really tight i don't need to do anything if they look like they're very big or they're kind of all over the place i either want to turn my dp up to correct for that or turn it down generally what i do is i go to turn it down first because most often times 25 is going to be very good for most barrels and what I really wanna do is I wanna take a look at the chrono and as I'm turning my DP down, I wanna make sure that my FPS is not dropping drastically. If I see like a 10 FPS drop, a 15 FPS drop, as I'm turning my DP down, I'm gonna stop, go back a few steps, get it back up to where it's consistent and then go back outside and look at my groupings and it should be tighter. If it's not tighter and you don't really care about a weird FPS drop, then what I would suggest is go outside, go down or up by five and shoot a few groupings. And if it looks like your groupings are getting tighter, start messing around by going down by three, going down by two, going down by one and changing those settings until you feel like you're as dialed in as you can be. That's a very quick and dirty way of doing tuning. Uh, we're probably gonna do an outside shooting test video to kind of really illustrate how to tune uh, outside. Um, and we'll go over that probably in a different video. But this is, that's the way I generally do it. We talked about, you know, tuning for performance for shot grouping. And we talked about tuning for performance a little bit in that about air efficiency. I'm also gonna touch on rate of fire. And we're gonna go back to that setting as well. And how I said, this is not your true rate of fire. You're probably from factory. You might be from factory, all factory settings, shooting at 18 rounds a second, because that is set to 18. There is a lot more involved with your DP, DN, and DR that goes into your rate of fire. So this is just a baseline. If you wanted to shoot faster, you can turn that number up. That's great, but it's gonna be limited by the settings you have for your DP, your DN, and your DR. It's always going to default to follow those settings before it ever adds or detracts time away from the pause that this creates to get you to that rate of fire that you are wanting. And even with that pause, it's not always gonna be your true rate of fire, and you need to test it with a chronograph to make sure that it is the rate of fire you're after. So, with all that being said, 
as I pointed out, this is mainly just a pause. So if you want this to be a very low rate of fire and you turn this down to 10 instead of 18, it will actually pause the whole system between shots in full auto to give you closer to 10 rounds per second. Uh, and that's a really slow rate of fire, but that's what this setting does. It adds a pause or it takes away a pause. So if you're trying to achieve some crazy rate of fire, what you're gonna wanna do is have your D, your all your dwell settings set to as low as possible while still functioning and your rate of fire set as high as you can have it while still functioning. You're gonna to wanna to go back to what I said about regular tuning, try and get those dialed in as much as you can. And then if you wanna increase your rate of fire, you go to your rate of fire setting and increase it and it will get rid of the manually set delay that it has in here to try and restrict the gun from shooting faster. When you start playing around with our like rate of fire tuning, there's a lot more factors than just the tune on your FCU that you're playing around with. You might be playing around with your barrel setup, your magazine setup, your weight of your BBs, the spring in the magazine. There's a lot involved with rate of fire tuning and not just the tuning on this FCU, but this is the base level. All right, guys, that's about it as far as the Polar Star FCU video is going to be. Um, like I said, we in some of this, I'm going to go over some more of this with a shooting portion and possibly a different video. We might tack that on later to this video as we update it, but um, that's about it. My name is Tom from Amped Airsoft. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this helpful. If you didn't find it helpful, please let us know how and if you want us to go more in depth on any of these settings, because I do know that some of these are a little bit more in depth than others. But hopefully you guys found that helpful. Hopefully I was uh, clear and concise enough for you guys. But yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.